Look up Photoshop. Lightroom has added generative remove and generative fill into their newest versions of Lightroom CC and Lightroom CC Classic. So whether you're a Classic user or a CC user, you're gonna find this exceptionally fun in the May 2024 update to Lightroom. So let's get into it. I'll show you what's inside, how to use it, and we'll kind of put it to the test. Is it going to kill Photoshop? Let's check it out. All right, so first things first, if you want to update to the latest version of Lightroom, the way you do that is by opening the Creative Cloud App Manager on your computer. So on a Mac, you just press Command Spacebar, type in Cloud, and you can select Creative Cloud App. From there, you'll get this little cloud icon at the top. You open up this window, and you can go into Apps, and here you can see if there are any updates available. So install that. Updates available, go to view updates, and you can see which ones need updating, all right? So I've already updated to Lightroom 13.3 on Lightroom Classic and 7.3 in just normal Lightroom. And you can see that we have this beautiful what's new. We've got generative remove, we've got lens blur enhancements, we've got some other things that really don't matter to me as much. But basically the big two things are we've got generative remove, which is amazing for those typical Photoshop tasks that we no longer have to head into Photoshop for. And we've got lens blur enhancements. So basically the ability to add better bokeh to the background, make it a little bit more realistic. We'll check that out and see how realistic it really is. So first off, let's check it out in Lightroom CC, then we'll head over to Lightroom CC Classic. All right. So once you've updated to the newest version of Lightroom, that's really important or you won't find these features. All you have to do is go to a photo you want to enhance. So let's go to say this one here of this couple. And I'm gonna go over to the remove tool. You know, inside here, it's a nice tutorial we've got. We've got try now, swing, it'll walk you through it. Okay, we're gonna agree that we're okay with doing this. And let's just say that I wanna get rid of this post here in the vines. I'm gonna go like that, select it. And you can go in here and sort of dial in with the subtract and add brushes to kind of refine your mask. And let's say that that mask is good. It kinda sucks, we'll see what Lightroom does when we give it a really sloppy mask, all right? Then we're going to go apply. Lightroom's gonna think for a while, and it is gonna take quite a while to load compared to the old spot tool. So that's the only downside of this, but let's just see what happens. Bada bing, bada boom. Awesome, look at that, before and after. We've completely gotten rid of that post. Let's take it a step further and see if it'll remove the people in this photo. So back to our remove tool, and we'll select our couple here. Let Lightroom think for a bit. And what's so cool is whether you're in Lightroom CC or Classic, it's exactly the same tool. So it's really easy to use either program if you swap back and forth. So you can see that it didn't do the best job here. Our mask could be a little bit better, so we could definitely add to it. The other thing that we can do is actually go over to the different versions. So Lightroom by default will actually generate three different attempts at removing the object in the background. And you can kind of cycle through them and see if one of them works. So in this case, three's okay. So I can maybe stick with it and go enter, go back to the remove tool and do another remove just on top of this little spot around the borders where it's kind of just not really clean. So I'll go like that. We'll try apply again and see if Lightroom will kind of smudge it and <laughs> fix it, make it a little bit better. So my impressions so far have been that this tool is actually pretty exceptional. It's not perfect and there are still times you're gonna be going into Photoshop, but it's going to save a heck of a lot of time for the more basic edits and particularly in spots where it's not gonna be super noticeable. Like for example, the most ugly part of this entire photo is the sprinklers they have on this vineyard. For no reason do you need to have this in a photo. So let's go apply, mask that out. And you can see we've removed the people, we've removed the objects, gone from here to here. Pretty crazy that we just did that in Lightroom, even though this mask obviously not good enough. So let's head over into Lightroom Classic now. I'm gonna show you how to use it inside of there. So we're gonna go over into Lightroom Classic and I've got a photo here of this couple and obviously they're looking at each other, the groomsmen are paying attention, but we've got one bridesmaid, there's always one, who's just not paying any attention to what's going on, it kinda takes you out of the moment, right? So we're gonna attempt to see if Lightroom can actually detect where she should be looking and fix her face. So let's get out of the full screen view. I'm gonna go over to the spot removal tool, pretty much in the exact same spot on the right hand side. And this time I'm gonna make sure that I select object aware. Now when you select object aware, Lightroom's going to look at your mask and instead of going by what you masked out, it'll say, oh, within this kind of area, what do I think is the object inside of that area? So you'll see if I did that, it's now refined it to its own kind of guess, okay? So I'm gonna cancel that and I'm going to zoom in on our lovely bridesmaid and we're just gonna select her face and see if Lightroom is going to save our butts because that would be so great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, I mean, I'm finding it takes about 10, 15 seconds of photo to load. You might have better luck. This is an M1 Max spec'd out. So it's like, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> this is this is like comedic gold here. Uh, here's before, she's just upset. And then we have like super happy. 
<laughs> different person, but at least she's looking in the right, right direction. Um, so not a winner, but let's see what the other variations are. That's actually not bad. That's the funny part. Um, so let's go in here and select number two. Okay. Okay. She's a different race there, I think. And then we got number three looking at the camera. And if you find that none of those variations work, just hit refresh and Lightroom is going to try again and just see what happens. So it's Again, what I don't love about it and what is probably coming eventually is going to be like in Photoshop where you can actually say what you want to be there, right? So like the back of a woman's head versus just Lightroom looking at it and kind of guessing what might go in that spot. So in this case, it's not going to work. I'm going to have to go into Photoshop and like fudge something. Otherwise, things are going to feel very strange. But let's try one more, just a little bit bigger, okay? And then maybe it will give us some different results now that we've selected outside of just her face. All right, what do we got? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is fun, just, just to play around. So I, oh, wow. Wow, that's good. That's good. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if nothing else, you will enjoy this new update just, just for fun. All right, but I'm going to reset that. Let's take a look at a couple other photos um, and show you the other new updates to Lightroom. All right, so I'm going to apply a basic preset here. This is a signature edits one. Koji, which stands for Kodak mixed with Fuji. And we'll go with clean too, maybe. That looks nice. All right, so that's a nice basic look. Um, but I wanna make the background a little bit more dreamy, a little bit more creamy. Add that to the photo, right? So I'm going to zoom down over here to the lens, where are we? <laughs> lens blur section, okay? We can actually turn this on, hit apply, and Lightroom's gonna analyze the background of the photo. It's gonna look at the blur and any of these hotspots in particular, and it's going to say, okay, what would this look like if we had shot it with a different lens or added a little bit more blur? Say shot at f2.8 instead, or f1.8 instead of 2.8. And we can actually go in here, adjust the blur amount. Now this isn't new to this version of Lightroom, but I am finding it's way faster and it looks way better. Like that actually looks good. Previously, I've just ignored this tool entirely because it was really slow and because the results kind of look like crap, but here's before and here's after. That actually looks really, really nice. And you can select your different versions of these blur effects. Sweet. Maybe we can even adjust the focal range. So maybe we want less of that background blurred out or more of that background blurred out. We can adjust it right there. So I'm finding that really good results. Here's before, here's after, right? Super dreamy. That's awesome. Couple of clicks. Now, the other thing that they've added that I don't really love so far is this adaptive blur background presets. And you'll be able to find these whether you're in Lightroom Classic or in Lightroom CC. Uh, but all we have to do is just select which we want and Lightroom is going to automatically add different amounts of blur and different types of blur to the background. So let's find a different photo here. This one, Hoi An, Vietnam. Looks okay. I'm going to add a, say, circle blur. And in a way, I almost wonder if they watch one of my videos because inside of the Signature Edits AI Engine Toolkit, I actually have some awesome blur backgrounds uh, that will do different things to the background automatically. So it'll find the subject and it'll do things like darken the background and add it, add some texture and make it feel like golden hour. And so they've kind of got a similar effect going on here, um, but mostly just with blurs. And you can see that it's like, it's okay, but it's not getting the whole background. <laughs> it's just getting part of the background where it looks good it looks pretty good. Uh, where the mask is failing, it's not looking so good. The other thing is you can't actually adjust anything other than the amount with this amount slider. And if you ever want to change the amount of this blur, you can't. So now if I go in here and let's say I wanted to add a different preset on top of this photo, just like a base set. Lightroom's going to just freak out for a second because I'm recording too much all at once. Um, but let's say I added a preset. Now, if I want to actually go back and dial in the blur again, there's no way to do so. It's not saved on an adjustment layer that I've been able to find. Um, that's a different one that I added earlier. So I'd have to go in here again, select a different blur, and then adjust it manually. And I don't even know if it's stacking the blurs or if it's resetting and replacing the blurs. It looks like it's replacing them. So so far overall, I'm a lot happier with the ones that I made myself. And there is a video if you wanna make these kind of blur presets for yourself and make better versions than what Adobe's given you. Um, it's pretty simple. So I've got a video, you can check that out on the channel or you can just purchase the AI engine presets. I'll leave those in the description below. But we've got the same idea, but the difference is with these presets, say we're going with the background deepen, I hit K on my keyboard to pull up my adjustment layers and now we've actually got that on an independent layer where everything inside of that layer is actually editable and you can adjust it and customize it versus these presets, which I'm finding the Lightroom ones, just not worth using. So I would give the lens blur on this side of the panel, <laughs> this lens effects, that's great. 
great update, really useful, definitely going to use that. Um, the adaptive generative fill and remove, really, really awesome. So let's take a look at a few more examples. Go in here, we'll go up to remove. And this time I'm going to try and remove all of the trees that are kind of like overhanging. And maybe like the whole back beach. Let's say we wanted this to be an endless lake. Let's go with something that's like a little harder for Lightroom to pull off. Okay, so we've added our mask. We'll go apply. And in five, four, three, two, five, four, one. Okay, <laughs> Lightroom said, hey, you had branches in the top. Let's just do different versions of branches. So here's some different coastlines, I guess you could say. But that's the problem with not being able to enter the prompts yet is I can't tell it I want an endless lake. I can't tell it I want mountains in the background. It's just going to guess and I have zero input other than just to say refresh and hope that eventually it'll give me what I want. So I would say provide some feedback to Adobe. Say, let us actually decide what we want to generative or input prompts or something like that because it will definitely improve the process if we can do that. So here's before, here's after. Do I like that one better? Yeah, I think I probably do. Let's try the next one. Nope, next one. It's okay. So let's say I went with that and we'll just add some, take away some saturation. Maybe add a little vibrance. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Just cleaned it up. Let's take a look at a couple more. All right. So we've got a waterfall and let's say that we want to remove the two people in this photo. This is really handy if you're taking a bunch of photos while you're traveling and say there's actually somebody on this rock here and like a lady taking a photo here. I don't know why she has to be a lady. It could be an elephant. It could be a man could be a tiger. We're going to go in here and just select these two lovebirds. Sweet. Apply and let Lightroom think. So the more obvious edits, it does an amazing job. And I'm finding it is better than like the previous spot removal tools. However, when it comes to the edits where you really do need some input because there's a specific thing that you want, not as great. So this is going to save 90% of the Photoshop work that I'm doing. Like let's say I just want to get rid of this sticker because it's ugly. Go apply. 90% of the Photoshop work that I am doing is probably going to be good enough. It's just that 10% of when you want something specific, you don't have the input yet, it's not quite there. But overall, definitely worth downloading this update and upgrading to the newest version of Lightroom if you haven't already, because there's just so much when it comes to being able to do things like the AI Engine Toolkit, have custom presets that use AI to actually mask and select and have tone curves on separate adjustment layers. Like there's so much new in Lightroom in the last year and a half. So hopefully this update is something you enjoy. Let me know your thoughts below. Is this something you're going to use or eh, kind of not that excited? I'd love to hear. And if there's anything that I miss, leave that in the comments because I would love to follow up with a different video in the future. All right. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, peace.